Hey guys, this is Rashcroft again with Political Simulators Unite. We're uh, looking at the title China Mao's Legacy. This is uh, made by the folks at Kremlin Games and it was released uh, on Friday, uh, May 24th. Uh, brand new game, um, as you can see here. Uh, two recent updates, nothing too dramatic has changed, um, but I wanted to uh, go through and show you guys what this game is all about. So um, we're just going to click on new game and I'm, run, I'm going to run through some of the different screens here. Uh, as you can see here at the top you have the indicator of the support of your party, you have the support of the people, Liberal, liberalization of minds, this is the state of liberalization uh, that your people are in, uh, standard of living, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Your international reputation. Now, uh, currently I'm listed as conservative and uh, no change based on that. You can see the plus 0, 0.0. Uh, my number of agent networks. This is what allows me to conduct clandestine activity. Uh, and my global influence. That rises and falls uh, as uh, my ability to project my influence outside my borders uh, rises and falls. Uh, we've got relations with the USSR, relations with the USA, and the budget. So, um, the uh, the setting of the game is uh, obviously 1976. This is about a month or two, I believe, before uh, Mao dies and you take the reins of China and so the goal here is to essentially pick which direction you want to go in terms of do you want to be a radical reformist and open the open up China's economy to markets uh, political freedom do you want to increase that uh, do you want to be intervening in other countries uh, internal policy in terms of their politics attempting to spread Maoism so there's a number of different questions um, or you know and the alternative of course is do you want to try to you know thread the needle follow a more moderate path or of course you can kind of take the reins of Mao and continue his uh, his uh, legacy um, hence the name so uh, let's uh, go through uh, some things here real quick on the uh, the mechanics of the game. Uh, one of the first screens here is the dynamics, or excuse me, the doctrines. So we have here um, your level of army power, and this will rise and fall with your funding on the economy screen. And then a very important thing here, this is very important, uh, you can change the type of economy uh, from this screen. So currently, we are a state monopoly, monopoly uh, with capitalism. So we're uh, right there on the uh, spectrum if, of different uh, types of economies. So um, to make a change, uh, the requirements are presented here. Uh, so to go to Birdcage, this is kind of a... Um, it's a movement to the right, I guess you could say, in regards of loosening some of the economic controls that the state puts upon people. Uh, and so as you go this direction, you're going towards less regulation, less government interference in the economy. As you go this direction, you're going back to more of a uh, uh, Stalinist uh, command control economy, that kind of thing. Um, and that has big impacts on you know your economy and uh, the direction of the of the country under parties similar situation you have people's democracy um, and you can go to different uh, uh, stages of liberalization there uh, civil rights fighting dissent limited or small control full liberalization now one thing to keep in mind on this is um, as you can see uh, underneath um, just as an example here, the full liberalization of civil rights. There is a money requirement, which in this case is 15. There's a party support requirement, which in this case is 90. And the people in power 
um, the members of your party, there must be a majority of reformers or liberals. Um, and uh, so that's, that's very important. Uh, and then Mao has to be dead. <laughs> so uh, in regards to the territorial system, currently we are a unitary state. Um, no other levels of authority outside of the national government. You can change that to go to a federation, confederation, a union of autonomies. Again, you're lessening the control of the central state as you go this direction. Uh, traditions and religions. Uh, this is almost along the lines of civil rights. Uh, currently, we're at the uh, strongest level of cracking down on uh, tradition and religion. So uh, you can take that uh, further to the, I suppose, liberal end of things. If you consider liberal to be, um, you know, lessening the 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 control over civil rights. Now, that's the interesting thing in these games, is left radicals. Um, oh, well, let's finish up with this. Military power, uh, building up, which is, we're here. Uh, you can go to full militarization, uh, defensive army, or contract army. And again, the different changes that are required. Uh, the different uh, requirements that must be in place before you can make the changes underneath. Okay, so here's one of the kind of confusing things for... Uh, someone like myself who's uh, lives in the United States and the left right spectrum um, doesn't necessarily apply uh, to their to, to the Soviet or communist politics so for instance um, the different factions of the Communist Party now the left radicals these are Mao's people basically uh, and you can either support them or put a prohibition on them uh, and conservatives, moderates, reformers, or liberals. So um, as you go down, you go to the political right from a communist perspective. Uh, so this would basically make a liberal would be like a, uh, and this is just my best guess here, would a liberal in this case would make them uh would put them probably like in the Democrat Party here in uh, the United States. Uh, but probably, frankly, to the left of that. So um, what you can do here is determine the direction of where you're, uh, of who's going to be uh, making up the party. So uh, if you click uh, supporting moderates over time, this pie graph, you'll see an increase in the number of moderates in the party. Uh, which, you know, impacts your support of the party, assuming that you follow policies that fall in line with what they want to see. Um, okay, so let's go to economy. A couple things here. Uh, you've got the general industry. Uh, the four things here at the top, they are kind of... Uh, uh, general indicators of where things are in terms of your economic development. So you have here the industry um, and you uh, are shown if you hover over the icon you're shown the change that takes place uh, over two weeks, uh, a two-week period. Um, so currently we're at 35, agriculture is 45, services 24, corruption 20. Now, you really want to keep an eye on corruption, as this will eat up your budget tremendously. Um, also, on state debt, currently we're at 14, uh, and the debt loss, so given the size of our debt, we are losing 0.3 from our budget on a two week, uh, over a two-week period. So all the revenue we, we bring in for our debt service, if you will, requires 0.3 of uh, any new revenue coming in every two weeks. Our maximum debt level is 20. I can raise this up and it'll automatically increase uh, what I have available to me. However, that can increase, it will decrease the support of the party. Um, losses from corruption. Currently we are losing two just from corruption. So keep in mind, and this can go I've seen it as high as 45. I've seen it as low as about 8. So you 
definitely want to keep that under control. Uh, and there's a number of different strategies people have proposed in terms of dealing with it. Um, also, maximum investment, what this indicates is the highest level of investment that can be placed in each of the different sectors here. Um, and then the gold reserve, uh, if I wanted to, just as an example, I could place the money I have, basically the discretionary money I have sitting there, I could place that in the gold reserve if I chose to. Although, I don't know if you noticed, if I take it out, I automatically lose 10% support among the party as I do it again. You got it there, and I'm losing support of the people. Um, and you can't go back. Uh, so you can't, like, oh, wait a minute, I didn't want to do that. You got to be real careful with what you do in some cases. Um, so let's talk about what each of these things mean here. Uh, the Army, this is the general it's kind of a generic number for the funding of the army which impacts uh, the army power uh, here uh, and so if you obviously if you increase that you're going to increase that the army power uh, state mechanism this is the uh, state bureaucracy this is your the funding given to the bureaucracy uh, the idea being is uh, the more funding you have there, the more effective the party will be and the government will be in implementing its uh, policy uh, decisions. Um, now, with all of these, and I want to say this kind of tying going back into corruption, with all of these, uh, if you take army from 10 to 15, for an example, or if you take state mechanism from like 16 to 20 um, and just... In, in one term, you are automatically going to dramatically increase corruption. Because the idea is is that, okay, these guys who are operating and doing their job um, relatively effectively with 16, you give them an additional, you know, four or five, I mean, that's, what, 30%, 40% increase? You know, that's going to have a tremendous impact on corruption. So you definitely, if you're going to, as you increase and set your priorities here on the economy, you're going to want to do it on a very limited, uh, over a significant time span, just to lessen the impact of corruption. So, okay, we've got agriculture, uh, that impacts this figure, uh, and we have welfare. This is tied into, um, standard of living. MSS, this is like Chinese KGB, so this impacts the number of agent networks that are produced. Uh, envelopes for party members, this is your bribery section, this is you bribing um, uh, the different members of the party. So that impacts the support of the party and this also has an impact on the general corruption um, dynamic. So as you increase this, yeah, you're going to get some increase here, but you're also going to get some increase here. Uh, so everything is interrelated in the game. Um, industry, obviously that is tied one-to-one -one with that. Uh, science, that's, this is tied to developing science points here, which you utilize in this section, which we'll talk about that uh, later. Um, and then, uh, let's see, propaganda ties into support of the people, services ties into standard of living, uh, diplomatic missions. This now, uh, there was an additional uh, piece here called uh, International Humanitarian Aid, I believe, and they took it out just today, and they just kind of lumped that in here with diplomatic missions. So what this is, this is like, to put it in a, from a U.S. perspective, this would be like funding the State Department. In other words, how much, how much, how many resources do your diplomats have to uh, utilize to further their goal of saying, you know, hey, China's awesome. So what this does is this has a direct impact on your intervention points now. So from you can see here from diplomatic missions and influence. Um, so if you want to increase your intervention points as wars come up, you're going to need to do that. Um, and so I think that pretty well explains the economic section here. Let's go to science. Uh, science, uh, what you're doing here is you're going to be given an indication of how many science points you have available and how many science points you produce. So what I can do is, and I'm just going to use this as an example, 
what you have here in the uh, technology section or research section is you essentially have the agriculture section here you have the industry section that runs all the way down to here and then you have the military which runs here um, and you can see the different things that you can ha get access to now obviously um, you can well I shouldn't say obviously but you can only do one of these at one time uh, and you're limited to so what you need to do is there's a there's a money requirement and over time you're going to be developing science points which is tied directly to your level of funding in science of, of the science section on the economy screen so what we have here is I'm gonna click on this and so it took point three to start this and I don't have any science points yet but as I do this will begin to fill up and you'll be, you can see that um, as time progresses and then this will all have access to this one now um, so you're limited here by the uh, money requirement to start it then you have to develop the science points to achieve the um, to be successful with the research but you're also keep in mind you're limited here by the year so these uh, different technologies that even if you are here let's say in 1977 and you want to move on to this you can't because you got the year limitation all right I know I'm being very verbose but um, if you are a new player to Kremlin games it does take a while to kind of get the hang of things uh, and uh, that's my intention here for this particular video is to not only discuss the intro intricacies of this game with some veteran players of Kremlin games but also to try to make them accessible to some new people um, so that's science under view um, a couple different screens here you know I'm gonna go back here for just a second what I want to show here is you have here these kind of national factors that have a uh, just a general impact on um, uh, your your political economic whatever situation so for instance currently we have uh, we have inefficient industry uh, this means that our industry growth is going to be going down uh, by a negative 0.5 over every two weeks now to deactivate that we have to own uh, excuse me our own industrial technologies so that's where science comes into play now what that means is you got to be researching the industrial technologies to get that removed and then inefficient construction there's construction technologies uh, right in here uh, that will allow you to remove these different things um, and also you can access some of these are good uh, in terms of the pot they have positive impacts on your budget or relations so on and so forth but you want to take a look at these and see what exactly they do and if you can kind of get rid of them uh, if you if you need to or what you can do to access them so let's take a look at this section we have the trade section a lot of information here influence kind of a general overview of who has influence in the world currently the Soviets have a point excuse me have two points higher than the Americans uh, and you're given kind of the where the battle is taking place over influence uh, the, the region in this case Africa you have the current leader of the Soviet Union uh, the arms race this is a new thing that they've added um, and we'll see where that goes uh, and it says we are not a member of the arms race territories some of the disputed territories in China um, and their status which can be changed by events in the game uh, Taiwan uh, yeah here we got an indication that the nationalists still control Taiwan you can actually invade Taiwan as China uh, and also the uh, disputed territory in India um, we uh, it's currently under Indian control we haven't recognized that uh, situations two countries specifically Iran Afghanistan with the indication of the power of each political interest group in those countries which can be changed and our unity so um, we have several peoples that's at 50 population you guys see it and the general Chinese unity level here at 65 okay 
So let's go to politics. Now, this is one of the Every one of those features that I showed you has been done on some form or another on previous Kremlin uh, games uh, titles. And now this is something that I think is really unique uh, in video gaming. Um, I mean, there's stuff like this in board games, but I haven't really seen this in computer games, and I think this is awesome. It just adds another level of complexity uh, to the game and just another thing to worry about. And in my case, I think the more detailed it is, uh, the more complex it is, usually that's better. Not always, but usually. Um, so let's go through this. Uh, this is who I, this is who you will be, the premier, uh, right at the top. Uh, and then you have, the, these are like the top three leadership positions within the country. You got Mao, um, I'm not going to pronounce these names just because I know I'm going to blow it. So what you have here is the green indicates their level of loyalty to you. As you hover over a person, you see their loyalty of for the other party members to that person. So as you can see, Mao has tremendous loyalty here at the top level. Uh, and even some of, among the more intermediate uh, party functionar functionaries. But as you go down... So we can see here, and it changes, of course. But as you go down, you can see that amongst the rank and file, he does not have that much uh, support. Although, I do. I have a little more. And um, so, it's a good thing. Now, a couple things that you can do here. Now, Mal's going to die in... I don't know if it's a year or a couple months. I forgot exactly. Uh, I've done a couple playthroughs, but not enough to really nail everything down. Uh, so what you can do is uh, you have four... Let's just click on this guy as an example. So what you got is his age. You have the faction that he uh, aligns himself with. And then you have two uh, kind of characteristics as to who he is. He's a hard man, and he's harsh. Now, I don't know what hard man means. Uh, harsh, I have an idea of what it means in terms of how it impacts a gameplay. And, and previously, um, in Crisis and the Kremlin, if you brought a harsh guy in to run a uh, level of uh, government, uh, it would be like kind of an anti corruption uh, czar type guy so uh, but again there is no explicit explanation from the guys at Kremlin games exactly what these things do which probably would sh should be something I should follow up with so anyways you get the characteristics there and the, in this case he actually is not only aligning himself with the left radicals he is the leader of the left radicals and he his position is let's see no this his position uh, he doesn't have a position currently but you can see what this is these are the different positions here that party officials can hold this is kind of the party hierarchy literally so you know I'm the most powerful I'm at the top and then it goes down from there um, let's see I'm gonna pick somebody who I can utilize a little bit better. Okay. This guy. Alright, so again, age, uh, his uh, party identification, or, I mean, wing of the party that he aligns with, and then the two characteristics. Uh, he is the minister of FA. That's currently his uh, portfolio. Um, he's not under investigation, and he's not uh, being uh, spied upon. So, uh, what you can do here is click, if I want to further this guy's career and further his influence, I can hit, uh, so unknown is, he's a total unknown to the people and has very little credibility currently. I can click support and that will increase um, his loyalty to me personally and as I've seen it happen as the game progresses, uh, he can rise to one of these levels up here. Um, these guys right here cannot be... Let's see, I want to use this as an example. Okay, so these guys right here 
you have to get them to this level before you can start appointing them to actual leadership positions. So, you know, you could have like all the guys who line up with your ideology down here. Um, they could be completely loyal to you, but you basically can't use them in the leadership positions because um, they're just considered just a little too, like, here we go, little known, little known, little known, so on, and then little known. Um, he was unknown. I hit support, and now he's little known. So, um, this is an incredibly complex um, uh, dynamic within the game. You will, as the game progresses, you will have conspiracies against you from people who have low loyalty to you. Um, and so what you want to do is to protect yourself as much as you can. Uh, you can hound people out of their position and that will actually push them down a step. Um, like for instance, well, if I did hound here, I can't because I don't have the agents at the moment, but if I did, it would take uh, this uh, guy Lee, it would knock him from here down to here. Um, and so if I had a guy who I wanted to get rid of, uh, or take him out of power essentially, or, or make him ineffective, I could click here, if I didn't want him, hit hound, he would be knocked down to here, and then all of a sudden he becomes ineligible to serve in any of the par party leadership positions. Okay, so I think I've spent enough time on this. Uh, let's go to wars. Now, currently there are no wars, um, but what they have done in this particular game, and when I say they, I'm referring to Kremlin games, what they have done is they have made it much more detailed in terms of your ability to support uh, anybody in war. So, what's going on with this is any war that takes place in the world you have four boxes and we'll talk about that later but the bottom line is it's incredibly detailed um, and you know exactly you're shown the immediate impact of let's say if you gave weapons to the communist rebels in Thailand um, that would be something that would be immediately impacted however it does impact your uh, relations with the two superpowers uh, and then of course on the map here we've got the different governments so red is communist or excuse me red is socialist as you can see yeah green is reformism and blue are countries that are being led by a liberal government um, that's under the government screen under influence we see here the influence uh, the yellow indicates the influence the governments that are under the influence of China red Russia or excuse me Soviet Union and blue is the West or the United States military uh, this is uh, the screen indicating who has military arrangements with who blue indicates a Western outlook uh, red is uh, these are Warsaw Warsaw pack uh, uh, ally members economy these are countries that um, your the different economic partners they have uh, so you have blue it's the West green us or China uh, red being the Soviet Union so um, now that we kind of covered that oh and last but not not least a couple interesting things that they've done they have a couple countries that are off map so what you have here uh, Indonesia Malaysia uh, Rhodesia, um, which soon to be uh, uh, Zimbabwe, uh, I believe. I, I could be wrong. If I'm wrong, I'll make the correction in the notes. Uh, and then the USA. So you have the ability to interact with those countries here. Um, and then every one of these countries can be selected. Uh, in the case of like the, I suppose, more minor Western African nations, what you can do in some cases, like Morocco, I can support the pro-Chinese forces. Um, however, there are requirements. I have to have four agent networks. Um, the power of pro-Chinese forces are less than 100, $1 million in my budget, and I have to have two army groups. So 
Um, and that's, again, a reference to this right here in terms of army power. So if that's the case and I want to support those guys, I can click support. Um, and then USSR, organize an alliance, USA. Th this game is incredibly complex, even I think compared to the previous two games that Kremlin Games released. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just kind of go through and show some of the actual gameplay besides just describing, you know, the main screens you're going to be interacting with here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Okay, so this envelope indicates, I'm going to pause it, this envelope indicates there's an event. So 5 no, congratulations on your appointment to the post of Premier of the State Council uh, of the People's Republic of China. Now, I'm not even going to try to pronounce their names. Comrade, uh, yeah. As you know, your predecessor was this gentleman who gained popularity and respect among the people at home and abroad for his honesty and administrative talents. However, he was also an active promoter of economic reforms and promoted reformers in the party, such as his protege, this guy. For these reasons, the death of Zhao on January 8, 1976 caused great grief among the people, which dissatisfied Mao and the leadership of the CCP, Chinese Communist Party, who reacted very reservably, reserve, reservedly to his death. Under the decree of Mao, the campaign of Five No was launched. Not to wear mourning bands, not to make wreaths, not to make memorials, not to hold memorial ceremonies, and not to hang photos of Zhao and Lai, which so far do not cause anything except con discontentment, or excuse me, discontent, and you as a new prime minister can influence its execution. All right, so there's the description of the event. Another thing, guys, as I think you'll, I think you gathered from this example, be ready to read because there's, I mean, there's a lot of text. So you click forward. Here are your four options. Uh, let it pass how it goes. Follow the strict, strict execution of Mao's decrees. Follow the strict execution of the campaign as well as criticize Zhao in the media. Gently sabotage the campaign. So basically, you got the four options here. Um, and this what what I would suggest you do is for the game is set out a general have an idea of generally what you want to do and where you want to go in terms of a general political direction and then uh, tailor your choices to these ca ca individual cases to fit that general direction that way you're not just running all over the place and you have a general idea of okay so I want to be kind of a reformer so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently uh, sabotage the campaign. I'm going to click that forward and then I'm given the result. So as Prime Minister of the State Council as well as the Minister of Public Security you are able as far as possible to mitigate the effect of the campaign. As part of the campaign government and police officers removed improvised memorials and tore down posters marking Zhao and Lai's achievements. Constant propaganda aimed at denigrating Zhao and bans on open commemoration of the deceased caused widespread discontent of people uh, with the top party, especially his wife, uh, Jian King. However, thanks to your efforts to sabotage the campaign, discontent does not go beyond reasonable limits. So what you can gather from that is the people who liked the guy who died, uh, they were upset at the at Mao's insistence upon removing any kind of a memorial or public commemoration of his death, they were, their discontentment was lessened by you gently sabotaging uh, the campaign. So that will be in, uh, reflected in the support of the people. Um, and I'm sure there's a number of other factors. This game requires a lot of uh, playing around with different options. Uh, and it definitely will take some time. Um, to just kind of get the hang of it, so be prepared. But uh, it does, I, I highly recommend this title uh, and encourage everybody to, to pick it up. Uh, it just went on sale this past Friday, the 24th. Um, and Kremlin Games has a solid reputation, uh, at least in my opinion. They 
don't just release a game and let it go and let it sit there and hopefully it makes money. They actively update the game. Um, they uh, will do... Uh, they've done a couple DLCs uh, for both of the games they've made previously. And they, interestingly enough, they make it contingent on the number of sales they get uh, of, of this game for the very first month. And they have different tiers that, you know, so as, it, as the game sells so many titles, uh, they're going to be adding this and so on and so forth. But what I found is, is that they update their games, they're responsive to their players, and uh, they care about the product and, and, and the, the end product, not just putting something out there. So um, just know that if you do choose to purchase the game, um, which if you are a fan of political simulation, I mean, you can't get much better than this. Uh, but if you do, do choose to purchase, purchase the game, know that um, the developers aren't going anywhere. They actually update this stuff and... Uh, and listen to the players, which is always nice. But um, with that, I'm going to leave uh, this video uh, just as is at the moment. I may be doing some additional playthroughs uh, in the future, um, but again, just wanted to encourage everybody to pick up the game. Uh, if you guys have any questions about what I've said, or if I uh, missed something, or if I'm wrong about something, by all means, comment uh, below, but uh, just wanted to thank you guys for watching, and uh, appreciate, uh, I would very much appreciate uh, you to subscribe, uh, to like the video, and if you know somebody who's interested in this, to share it with someone. Uh, but uh, this is Rashcroft uh, saying thank you, and uh, look forward to talking with you guys in the future.